The Avro Lancaster, mainstay of Bomber Command from the moment it came into service in 1942. A great four-engine bomber capable of carrying the war into the heart of Germany. It really was a charm to fly. It really was such a different aeroplane. The Lancaster was the most famous RAF bomber of the Second World War. Designed by Roy Chadwick, it played a key role in raids against the enemy, which helped change the course of the conflict. The Avro Lancaster came into service at a time when it seemed that the war wasn't going at all well for the Allies, for Britain. Uh, there'd been the success, if you like, of the Battle of Britain, which was a defensive battle, prevented an invasion from taking place, but there was no means, apparently, of hitting back at Germany. But the four-engined bombers, like the Halifax and particularly the Lancaster, which was capable of carrying almost its own weight in bombs, changed that. To meet the country's wartime need, Avro created one of the largest and most lethal bombers in the war. It was fitted with four Rolls-Royce Merlin V12 engines and had a range of 2,530 miles. During the conflict, Lancasters flew over 156,000 raids, dropping around 50 million incendiary bombs and 608,000 tonnes of explosive devices. Typically, it had a crew of seven whose average age was 22. It was big. It looked enormous. During the war, Rusty Warman piloted Lancasters with 101 Special Duty Squadron. He was just 20 when he flew it for the first time. And you think, oh, we've got to fly that. Does it fly? And obviously it does. But you had the impression of, you've got to get this thing off the ground now. The aircraft was designed to deliver a devastating blow to Germany by bombing its cities and munitions factories. Although controversial, its aim was to drain Germany's will to fight and quickly end the war. We don't really consider the number of bombs carried, but rather the weight of bombs. A typical bomb load would be a 4,000 pound blast bomb designed to blow the roofs off houses or buildings, uh, and a lot of incendiary bombs to set fire to anything that's left. The Lancaster was developed so that eventually it could carry a massive bomb, the 22 thousand pound bomb, the Grand Slam, designed by that brilliant engineer Barnes Wallace uh, to destroy targets which were apparently impervious to bombs. Right in the front of the aircraft there's a, a, a glass dome with a clear vision panel uh, and behind that is a, a sort of like a bench and the bomb aimer would lie on that and peer through the bomb site. And at that time, as they made their run up for the target, the bomb aimer is virtually controlling the aircraft. And he would press the button to release the bombs and then shout to the pilot or communicate to the pilot, bomb's gone. These aircraft could really only operate at night. The uh, Bomber Command rear found out the hard way very early on in the war that the losses sustained in daylight operations were simply too great to bear. So they, they, most of the raids, nearly all of the raids, happened at night. Very difficult business, of course. Flying at night uh, requires special skills, immense concentration on the part of the pilot, uh, and it's a frightening experience. During one operation, Rusty and his crew had an extraordinary brush with death. I borrowed road to Lancaster, not deliberately, uh, and we just dropped our bombs just closed the bomb door when an aircraft blew up right underneath us, slightly to one side, and turned us over upside down. And there we were, upside down, uh, nothing on the clock but the baker's name, as we used to say. Uh, and uh, instead of trying to pull it out, we rolled round and went all the way round, which was very much easier than trying to pull it back out. We lost a lot of height, uh, but it came out fine. In 1943, Bomber Command launched its most daring raid ever using the bouncing bomb created by Barnes Wallace. 
only one aircraft was considered capable of achieving success. Lancasters had to be used for that raid. It was the only aircraft capable of carrying the bomb, the upkeep weapon, the famous bouncing bomb, in reality a revolving depth charge, which weighed about five tonnes, the heaviest conventional bomb used up to that point by the RAF. So it had to be the Lancaster. The Lancasters had to be heavily modified. They lost their bomb doors. Uh, they lost some of their armament. Uh, the mid-upper turret went uh, in order to uh, enable them to carry out the raid. 19 Lancasters took part in the raid. Uh, that was 133 young men. 53 of those young men never came back. Three dams were, de were, were attacked. Uh, the Myrna Dam, which was breached. The Ada Dam, which controlled the headwaters of the Mittelland Canal. And the Zorpa Dam was damaged but not breached. All of that damage was repaired within six months. So in that sense, it wasn't uh, as great an achievement as, as perhaps the film makes out. But it did have a tremendous effect. The Avro Lancaster was the backbone of Bomber Command's strategy. But its men paid a high price. 55,573 RAF crew died during the conflict. Rusty and his crew survived, and he was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross for his service. And no matter how challenging the situation they found themselves in, they knew they could rely on their Lancaster. Coming back on two engines, you knew you were going to get back. Slowly, but you knew you were going to get back. But, uh, so it really was an aeroplane to be proud of flying, really, and such a reliable old piece of machinery. And people who designed it deserve tremendous credit for what they achieved. Working or waiting, ground crews were under stress, marooned at cold, wet dispersals, miles from a cup of tea, straining to hear the drone of returning engines. It was a little song we used to sing, coming in on the wing of the prayer, with one engine gone, we'll still carry on, coming in on the wing of the prayer. So coming back off hops, coming back over UK, we got all the crew together, we all sang coming in on the wing of the prayer, which, which is all cold as hell, you know, but it was great fun. At last, some came back. They'd come in with fuel tanks ripped open and engines wrecked, fabric burnt and metal like a sieve. Then we'd have to do a week's work in ours. Our motto, polite version, was you bend them, we mend them. It was a, an aircraft that helped win the war, the main aircraft that helped win the war. The Lancaster is truly iconic. Uh, there are only two airworthy Lancasters at the moment, one in Canada and that operated by the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight. And when that flies over, low with those four great Merlin engines belting out their song, uh, it's very evocative. And to those of us that can remember it from its past days, it's almost a tearful moment. <laughs>